Hey there internets, I'm Michael and this is Two Can Play That Game, teaching you how to play Five Tribes by Days of Wonder. So let's take it to the table. The first thing to do when setting out the game is to give each player their camels. So in a two player game it's 11 camels and you have to use the blue and the pink colours. And for any other player number, you use eight camels. Also, you need to give each player their turn order markers. So in a two player game, you'll each have two, otherwise it will be one. Next, give each player five of the one coin tokens and nine of the five coin tokens. So that every player has a total of 50 gold. Then take the 30 tiles and lay them out in a grid that is five by six like this. Once done, you'll reach into the bag and draw out three meeples at a time, placing them on each of the tiles. Then you wanna place the bid order and turn order tracks by the board and getting all the turn order tokens, just shake them up and randomly put them on the bid order track. Then you'll want to take all the resource cards, shuffle these up and deal a row of nine, leaving the deck to one side of it. Then take your genie cards, shuffle all these up and deal out three. And finally, place all your money tokens, palm trees and palaces just at hand near the board. And you're set up ready to play. So the aim of the game is to get the most victory points and your victory points are your money. So you start the game with 50 and as you gain more money during the course of the game, that will be adding to your victory points and also any tiles you control at the end of the game will give you victory points as do any elders or viziers that you control. And the game will end when either one player has placed all of their camels, you'll then finish that round. Or if there are no more available moves on the board, that will be the end of the game. So how does the game work? Well, it is broken down into rounds and a round will be over after four turns in a two player game or a four player game and in a three player game after three turns. So after each person has had one turn. So you start with your pawns on the bid order track here and starting with position one, that player would choose a position on the turn order track. These positions have a cost on them though. So there are three that cost zero, then you've got one, three, five, eight, 12 and 18. If you wish to go on one of these spaces, you have to pay that amount. If you can't pay, then you can't go there. So for example, this blue player will go on this zero, costing them nothing, and then they get to place their next one. And they'll also place that on a zero, costing them nothing. The pink player then places on a one, which means that they have to pay one coin to the bank. Their final piece, they put on a zero, which pushes the pawns that were already there up meaning that they will get two turns in a row. You then proceed to take turns, starting with the player whose pawn is furthest along the turn order track. So here, this red would be first. When we take this pawn off for them to their turn, we then place it in the bid order track, starting at the lowest number. So they'll get to be the first to bid next round. Then they pick one tile that has meeples on it. They will pick up all the meeples off that tile and they will then move along and they will move dropping a meeple on each tile as they go. The final tile that they reach must have a meeple that matches the final meeple that they're dropping. So for instance I was finishing with a yellow so this tile must have a yellow meeple on it. Then you take off any meeples that match the colour that you dropped on that final tile. These will then sit in front of you if they are the yellow viziers and they'll be worth victory points at the end of the game. One point per vizier 
or if you have the most, you get an additional 10 points. If you take the white Elder Meeples, they're each worth two points at the end of the game and will sit in front of you. If you take the green Merchant Meeples, then you will take a number of resource cards equal to the number of Meeples starting from the left of the row. So if I took two, I would take these two cards here. Those cards will then sit in front of you. And at the end of the game, you'll get a number of victory points depending on the number of different resources you have in a set. If you take the blue builder meeples, then you'll get a number of coins from the bank equal to the number of meeples that you have times the number of blue spaces either on or adjacent to where you are. So on this space here, there would be three adjacent blue spaces. So if I took two blue meeples, that would get me six coins from the bank immediately and the blue meeples would go back in the bag. The final meeples are the red ones, the assassins. If you take assassins, you may use them to either kill one meeple that is sat in front of a player, so either a vizier or an elder, costing them those points, or you can assassinate a meeple on the board within a number of spaces equal to the number of meeples. So with two red, I could go one, two, or one, two, and kill a meeple on that space or anywhere within that range. So I could take these two and then kill this meeple. If when you drop your meeple on a tile, you take off all the meeples that are there. So let's say that these were all red and I finished by placing a red. I would take all of those off. I then get to place my camel on that tile, claiming it, which will get me those victory points at the end of the game. Also, if you remove the last meeple off of a tile by assassinating, such as using these red to kill this blue, you still get to claim that tile for removing that meeple. You don't get to claim a tile when you do your initial pickup of meeples in order to drop off. The other thing that will happen is when you finish on a tile, in the bottom left, it tells you what that tile's action is and you then perform that action. So down here we have the oasis and if you finish on an oasis, you place a palm tree on there. And it doesn't matter if it still has meeples on, you still get that benefit. You just don't get to place your camel. These palm trees and these palaces, which are what you get to place in a village here, if you finish, are worth additional victory points at the end of the game. The palm trees are free and the palaces are five. There are also minor trade posts which you can spend free of your coins in order to take, take one of the first free resources in the path. So at the moment that would be these three. If these two had already been taken this round, the first three would be these. It's important to note that the rarity of these resources is stated on them. The number of dots equals the number of those in the deck. Um, with the Fakirs, it tells you there are 18. As well as these minor trade posts, there are also the large trade posts. They work the same way, except for they cost more, but you also get to take more resources. You get to take two out of the first six. Another of the spaces are the genie spaces. When you finish here, you may pay either two elders that you have in front of you or an elder and a fakir card in order to buy one of the face-up genies. These will get you victory points at the end of the game given on the card and also they will give you a special ability and the ability does vary per genie. Normally they'll give you a way to gain additional victory points. That's not your turnover just yet. Having taken your meeples, done the action for the tribe of meeples that you've taken, and then also doing the action for the tile, 
before your turn ends, you have the opportunity to sell any sets of resources that you have in front of you in order to gain coins from the reserve ready for the next bidding phase. This is not a requirement, and if you do sell them, you will lose them and won't be able to build that set up any further. Then that would be your turn over. It would progress to the next player's turn, who'd follow the same, and then the next and then the next, until every player had gone and there were no pawns left on the turn order track. Then you do the clean up. This point, if any resources were gone, let's say these had gone, you would shift down the resources that are already there, making them nearer and more accessible, and then put out new resources to fill the row back up to nine cards. And then you will also, if any genies have been bought, replenish with new genies. You'll continue in this way until either there are no valid moves, meaning there's nowhere that you could pick up meeples and then drop them off to end on a space with a matching colour of meeple, and all players must agree there are no available moves, or until a player has placed all of his camels claiming tiles. At this point you'll total up the score and whoever has the most wins the game. And that is how you play Five Tribes. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family. And do also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.